It's true, we've made two brand new apps for the Touche. A new version of our Ableton device with MPE support and a much requested standalone app so that you can use it with any DAW and with your hardware. So before I show you what's new and how they work, first, some context. A year ago, I got the Touche SE. And if you've watched my previous video, you know that I really, really like it and I definitely recommend it. But at the same time, I really, really dislike the software that it comes with, Lie. Lie kind of forces you to work in a very specific way and it's very annoying. Up until now, it still doesn't support VST3, it doesn't support audio units and you just can't control your DAW. So I was annoyed last year and I just hacked a simple device to solve all of my problems with Lie and then I upload it on the internet. And it seems that a lot of you agree with me and you actually like it and you download it. So over the past year and after many conversations and feedback that I've gotten from you on Discord, I've compiled this list of features and mods that you've proposed and I set out to design a new device that hopefully fits everyone's unique workflow and everyone's unique setup. And now it's ready and it actually comes in two forms. There is a brand new, rewritten from scratch, Ableton 12 device with MPE support and there's a standalone app that you can use with any DAW. So I would like to thank all of you very, very, very much for your enthusiasm and the support that you've shown over the last year, especially those of you that gave me advice and helped me test it and troubleshoot it. I'm really, really glad we've met you guys and I hope you use the new apps and that you like them. So let me show you what this is all about, all the new features. First, the Ableton device. Touche Control version 2 has 8 assignable controllers now. You can switch between controllers 1 to 4 and 5 to 8 using the tabs here. For every controller, you can select the direction of the Touche it is assigned to and you can view its response here. You can also change its minimum and maximum values and its response curve. And you can even apply a time envelope to the controller so the modulation fades in or fades out gradually which is by far my favorite feature. You can view the output response of the controller here. And if you want, you can apply smoothing to the output to stabilize it if you have shaky hands. Now, mapping is as simple as any Ableton device. You click on the map button and then select the parameter you want to control. But you can also send MIDI out and aftertouch directly to your hardware or software synths. Finally, you can choose how the Touche automation is recorded. MIDI, which is the default for Ableton, records automation as MIDI data coming in from the Touche. But with Object, you can additionally record automation directly on the parameters you are controlling. This way, you can edit the automation later directly on the parameter that's being automated. Now, let's take a look at the Settings tab. Here, you can set the MIDI CC's your Touche sending so that the device can respond correctly. The defaults are 16 for down, 17 for up, 18 for left and 19 for right. If you don't know or have forgotten what CC is your Touche is sending, you can press on it and look at the numbers on the MIDI in monitor. You can also filter specific information coming in from your other MIDI devices, such as pitch bend, aftertouch, the mod wheel and sustain pedals. And exclusively for the Touche SE, you can set what the two big unused buttons on the Touche do. By default, the left one toggles pitch bend on and off, which lets you use the left and right directions of the Touche freely without worrying about bends, and then turn it back on instantly when you need it. You can quickly check if pitch bend is active up here. And the right button activates what I've called the shift layer. Now, what is the shift layer? Basically, it's a second set of settings for the entire to share, which can be accessed at the press of a button. So for instance, you could map down to let's say fill the cutoff on layer one, the default layer, and also map down to volume on layer two, the shift layer. Now, when you press down the Touche, you'll be controlling the filter, but the moment you press the Shift button, you'll be controlling the volume. You can check if the Shift layer is active up here. An interesting feature of Shift is that the moment it's activated, the values of the controllers on the default layer will all freeze in place. So you could also use the Shift button as a freeze function to hold a specific value without you having to keep your hand on the Touche. Now, if you forget what all the buttons do and it's some extra help, you can check Ableton's info view on the bottom left for tooltips and explanations. And now the standalone app. The layout is pretty similar with the Ableton device. 
First, select the model of the touche you're using and set the MIDI CCs your touche is sending so that the device can respond correctly. The defaults are 16 for down, 17 for up, 18 for left and 19 for right. If you don't know or have forgotten what CCs your touche is sending, you can press on it and look at the numbers on the MIDI in monitor. You can also choose whether the touche sends pitch band data or not. Now, below you've got 8 controllers. You can select the direction of the touche they're assigned to and you can view the response here. You can also change minimum and maximum values and the response curve. And you can even apply a time envelope to the controller so the modulation fades in or fades out gradually. You can view the output response of the controller here. At the bottom, you can select which MIDI CC number its controller outputs so you can map it to your DAW. To start mapping, set the MIDI input in your DAW to FROM TCU. Then, if your DAW supports MIDI Learn, you can move the touche in the direction you want and map it. But to make your life easier, especially if you want to assign the same direction to multiple parameters, you can activate mapping mode by clicking on the big map buttons below. What this does is that it only transmits that specific controller you want to map. So the MIDI in of your DAW is not flooded with MIDI data from the other controllers. If you want to control hardware directly, then you can change the MIDI out port up here to whatever hardware you want to control. Obviously, you can save presets for different setups on the right. To save a preset, just type a name and then shift click on a slot in the preset grid. To load the preset, just click on a slot. You can also delete the current preset or you can load a new blank default preset. If you want to set your own default preset, just click on set default. Now, for those of you that have a Touche SE, there's some more special features that take advantage of the two big unused buttons on the bottom of the Touche. When you choose your Touche SE as the model, you will see that the button mode section gets activated. The app has two modes. Preset mode, in which the buttons cycle forwards and backwards through all of your presets, and map mode, in which mapping is automatically activated and the buttons cycle forwards and backwards through each controller. So you can map them directly from the Touche without having to toggle between the app and your DAW. In order to toggle between the two modes, you have to long press the left button for preset mode, which is the default, or long press the right button for map mode. Now, if you forget what all the buttons do and need some extra help, just click on the big help button in the corner. If you need even more help, or if you want to request a very specific feature or a mod that suits your unique workflow, or you just want to talk to us, come and join our Discord and drop me a message. So, you know the drill. The link for the apps is in the description. Go and download them. For the time being, they're in a pay what you want, pay what you can basis just like our other devices, which you should also check out, by the way. Test them out, and if you really like them and you use them, please, please, please consider supporting the channel because that way we can keep making apps and videos. Also, for those of you that are on Bitwig, there is another channel that have made a very similar device on Bitwig's grid, so I've linked that in the description as well. Check it out. Now, I mentioned that we also have other wonderful devices, and here they are. Check them out. Really, check them out. Click. Somewhere here. They must be floating around me. I can smell them. Check them out.